Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, Two Witnesses Live. We have an awesome guest, and uh, <laughs> I know Watchful is excited to introduce him. How, how are you doing tonight, dude? I'm doing pretty good. I'm <laughs> excited. I made it back to the uh, the gym. I've been uh, trying to get back into the exercise routine. I, I hurt my knee a couple months ago, and it kind of screwed up my routine, so I'm super excited to be back into the routine. Today's day number two. So looking what, what? forward to getting the habit back established. Got to stay in shape, especially going into these end times. <laughs> Why are you here at the gym? Well, <laughs> interesting you should say that. Got to outrun the zombies. <laughs> That's funny. Um, well, we're going to bring on a guest, and um, I think you guys enjoy him. This would be interesting. Yeah. Anything you got watchful before we do? Yeah, so this is uh, Fred uh, Fury from our chat. So uh, I know that mo a lot of our regulars uh, are probably familiar with Fred. And um, yeah, so we, he wanted to come on tonight and talk about worship. Uh, and, you, and you may have noticed from the thumbnail that it's spelled W-A-R, warship. So this could be a fun and entertaining night. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, I'm... I'm it's funny because I'm chomping at the bit to talk about Terrence Howard, but I also really want to talk about uh, worship. So we'll uh, we'll see if 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 I can <laughs> keep it on topic tonight because I've been studying Terrence Howard all day long. So. Hey, I have I have uh, you since you shared that with me. Um, it's very interesting. Man, I just I can't get enough of his videos. I don't know what to think of that guy, but we'll we'll talk about that later. Yeah, it's a whole other can of worms. It is. Yeah. Welcome, okay. Fred. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. I am Fred Fury. So, uh, Fred, so so, who are you and what do you do? I am a radio host, a worshiper of God, and um, possibly an elect individual of God also. Um, I've okay. experienced one coma, three... Uh, near-death experiences, which all brought oh, wow. me closer and more clarity to God um, and, and made me realize how much I'm allergic to modern-day medicine. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's sure. the that, that's the 30,000-pitch uh, uh, elevator pitch of who okay. is Fred Fury. So you're uh, you're on the radio. Is, the, is this a show that anybody would be familiar with? Um. In the underground, yes. Um, I am um, part of Psychopathic Records and the Juggalo community as a whole and the underground music where you hear Tyson James, Mises, Byron Gray, all the Christian artists that get canceled off of YouTube or have to fight to stay on YouTube. All the independent artists that aren't signed up with um, mainstream records that you won't hear on the radio normally, those are the artists I play. Okay. Um, I, I also do people that do beats and music beats and do poetry. My, my focus is hip hop as a whole. Um, but I also do other genres we try to avoid. Um, country and I get scolded a lot if I put country on. <laughs> However, I, I I did call it back in the day that what we have now for country hip hop or hick hawk music was going to be a thing back in 2017. And boy, did people uh, hate that idea. <laughs> could, could you explain uh, what the Juggalo community is? Because I know there's going to be a lot of our subscribers who aren't familiar with that term, just so that they don't make any assumptions on, on the word that you're using. Because I'm making assumptions right now. Yeah. Okay. A Juggalo <laughs> is a fan of different artists from the Psychopathic Record label initially. That's all we are, is fans of a music group. However, the FBI has labeled us as gang members, and they've um, slandered us in so many ways, but we are not. We're just fans. Right. That's it. 
<laughs> cool. So, a- as a fan, you play pr- you know specific music to satisfy the uh, tastes of of other fans of the of similar music. Uh, no. Is that correct? No. No, <laughs> not at all. Okay. Peace. I am uh, new releases only. I. Oh, okay. When I came out in 1999, 2000, I'm going. I have to be different than everybody else. And knowing God the way I do, the old is new, the new is old. Mm -hmm. So I went back to when I started my show uh, as an MTV version, and I ran through OBS simultaneously while I was doing my radio broadcast, the video show of the actual videos that were being broadcast or released by these artists. So people that got to watch on youtube and such they'd be seeing the actual videos and i'd be watching along with them and the artists would be joining in and it's like wow i've never watched my own video (laughs) (laughs) so i do new releases um and i do what the artists want to promote so i get all their notifications so on so forth from youtube spotify direct email and the direct emails get priority over anything else. Cool. So. All right. So, 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 so you're a DJ, which is pretty cool. And so, uh, there's some other things that are really interesting about your life too. So, you're also living off grid. Is that correct? I am currently um, off grid living. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Everything so around. Yeah. <laughs> is this is is this in in preparation so that you can be self sufficient or uh, is it this so has you can been, be mobile for the mobile ministry? Is it, so what what has you living off grid? How long have you been off grid? Okay, I have um, never really had a real home since 1999, and God put me in street ministry. My email address became my legal address. Because I was a street minister, and the only thing I had that was secure was an email address. So the courts made it because the courts got a hold of me. It, it was a divorce court thing, folks, not criminal court. <laughs> sure. um, that being said, um, because they were able to notify me via email, that became my legal address. So I got to do things and travel all across the um, Saskatchewan, um, Manitoba, and Alberta. Alberta's my stomping grounds. I've done 90% of my street ministry here in um, Alberta. And then I'd go back to Winnipeg where my family is and um, enjoy respite. Um, It wasn't until 2017, 2018, I felt that it was time to get an RV and go completely off grid in a permanent fashion. Sure. And I have went through two RVs now since then and three, no, two campers. <laughs> what happened? Yeah, they don't, they what don't happened? really build RVs to, to live in long term. You almost have to build something custom if you're going to, if you're going to do a lot of traveling. I love I love living on the road. I, I lived in, in my car for a couple of months when I was going through some hard times with my wife. Uh, it, there is something to the freedom. There is something about living in a vehicle, but uh, stuff that's not built for that lifestyle wears out quickly. Uh, I, can, I completely understand. I, I started watching a yeah, lot of these what, people what? who are in van life, and it makes a lot of sense that they build their own vans because they've got to build them tough for living in them every day. No, you're, you're right. We have a 2015 40 foot motor home and you would think it being that age that it would be like awesome and, and tip top shape. It, uh, with a family of six, and it took, it's, it's like, uh, it's taken a beating. Um, yeah. it is riding them things around the countryside. Um, so, but it's a good bug out vehicle. Yeah. It m- mine is uh called this one behind me is my bug out buggy. Um I've been doing uh, work on it for 2 years and because of Blaze who is my service dog, he's a Rottweiler Pitbull cross. And yes, folks, I do need a Rottweiler Pitbull cross because we have bears and we have cougars around here that frequent sure. us. So <laughs> 
<laughs> is that a Winnebago behind you? That is a 1985 GM Ford RV nice. with the 460 okay. in it. That's oh. not a Winnebago. So, no, it's not a Winnebago. It's a bug out vehicle with uh, storage food that I've been putting in. I've renovated the roof. Um, engine wise, it was in mint condition. Body, like the chassis, everything was in mint condition. It's like, okay, I can do the renovations. And this month, we are, Blaze and I are upgrading to a. Um, uh, a bigger motorhome, a 27-foot uh, camper with a slide on it, so there'll be actual living space for both of us. <laughs> sure. Where's Where's he now? He's you, right huh? here at, at my feet, um, out of ah. camera space. Ah, fantastic. That's awesome. Man's best friend. So, uh, so you mentioned you have a street ministry. So, what does that consist of? So, are you on the? Are you actually on the street witnessing to people, and like a, um, like a street evangelist, or is this just a person-to-person -person ministry? Um, when I started in street ministry, it wasn't anything of mine. It was a, I got kicked out of the Strathcona Hotel um, in, in Edmonton, Alberta, for having my own coffee machine. So I was, I had a really unique, um, um, you got kicked out for what? But while I was uh, kicked out, I had God and Holy Spirit whisper to me. It's like, do you want to see me shine on the streets or do you want to continue in broadcasting? Well, I want to see you shine on the street. Little did I know that um, I would choose to become homeless and live with the street people on the streets, pray for them, give them safe places to stay. And I did that just because it was the right thing to do. Um, I was a busker sure. by, tra by trade. So on the day, on, in the daytime, they would see me busking and everything else. What is if that? it was bad. Busking? Go ahead. Busking, sorry, playing, I playing instruments, singing, um, so on and so forth. I was a drummer. Oh, by, okay, sorry. Um, yeah, I, just, I misunderstood you. I apologize. So it, when it was rainy days or off days, I'd go to temp labor and do regular labor jobs. And the evenings, I would be on the streets and seeing and making sure everyone's safe and everything's kosher. No one's wanting to... Um, stab each other if they need to talk or going through whatever they were going through i would made myself available well, that's so. great yeah that's amazing i mean that's that really could good. be more that could be better that could help more people than a lot of other things and sometimes people just need to talk yeah. well I, a, I i always had worship music with me whether it was um Christian radio station playing or my Walkman playing or Disman playing, depending on the error that we caught me in. <laughs> yeah. Bluetooth, cell phone, so forth. <coughs> um, and the worship music is what I noticed people were more attracted to. And then they were more open to hearing me talk about God and how God did this for me. God healed me of um, this hand, folks. Uh, okay, there, there we go. go. This hand, yeah. the whole circumference here was burnt with 650 degree tar. I used to yeah. be a, a commercial roofer. And um, it's been healed. Miraculously, even it's a documented miracle because That's it shouldn't awesome. be functional at all. Sure. sure. Um, after I got out of the hospital, the first thing I did is I called my roommate up. I said, get me to the nearest church service that's doing worship now. And I immersed myself every day in the prayer room until all the bandages came off. And... Everyone, including myself, to this day, am amazed. 
There's your dog. Oh, there's your dog. What a cutie. <laughs> That's a One of my favorite dog. dogs was a Rottweiler. Wow. He's a Rottweiler in disguise. <laughs> yep. T tell, me about your in tell me about your NDEs, if you don't mind. Uh, I definitely can. Um, the, the first thing that happened to me was actually the coma. Um, and I had that from a, also from allergic reaction to medicine. But I went into a coma and I, ex I experienced like the seventh heaven where people came up to me and I could smell colors. I could, I, I could hear people talking without them actually yeah. talking. And yeah, everything's that telepathic. Was, and that was my coma experience. And then I, from there, my MDE experiences. Hold on, Blaze wants in now. <laughs> you know what's interesting after listening to Terrence Howard. So just to bring Terrence okay. Howard into this a little bit. Um, t t uh, so Terrence Howard is an actor. He's uh, he's in the show. He's a main act. He's a the lead actor in Empire. Um, he was also in Iron Man. So he's a he's an A list actor. Well, he also happens to be incredibly smart with physics. Physics. He's he's also a physicist. Very very well, smart with. Um, do we want to cut uh, to his page real quick? I think. Oh, it would I don't. Be worth I don't. I don't have it prepped. Um, maybe I'll 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 prep some of that stuff after this. I want to get let let Fred get back to his NDE. I just wanted to say this. Some one of the big things that he that Terrence has been talking about is um, the el all the elements in the universe have have um, frequencies associated with them, which we're we've been talking about that. Um, they also have sounds associated. So sound and frequency obviously being the same thing. But so he he talks about the elements and like the key of E or F sharp, mm -hmm. stuff like that. But they also have colors associated with them. So I find it really interesting. That when I think Fred's got something on that. Yeah, go ahead, Fred. Thank you, Watchful. Terrence, you mean the black guy that I was uh, yes. refreshed my memory today about this show and yeah. what the colors of the flags and what everything means in the Bible and that I got to learn before I got thrown out into the world and doing street ministry. <laughs> yes, that's who it, yeah. it, Watchful caught me off guard with him, but I think he is on. To well, something. he caught me off guard too. I, I I've been just kind of seeing you know little snippets here and there for the last week, and finally I just like I've got to watch these things because I keep seeing this guy everywhere, and now I can't stop watching his interviews. Well, the guy's okay, literally what, gonna. If what, what he's saying is true, he's gonna literally change the world. But I don't know if it's in a good way or a bad way yet. I'm still investigating. Okay, what he's saying, saying it. What he is saying is factual. When I was studying for my degree in broadcasting and when God was preparing me as a worshiper and through the NDEs, it was all in respect to audio production, colors from the Bible, what they represent in a biblical meaning as to tones and frequencies. And that's why I became a hand drummer because I knew I could sway people without doing, uh, saying a single word, without singing and, and corrupting their ear holes. Or, it was all by rhythms and vibrations. And mm -hmm. Knowing that, it was going, okay, I want to see this in action, God. Show me how this works. And I was, God did what God does. Yeah. Well, <laughs> people so got before, before we move on with your NDE, I just wanted to point out that he made some really interesting points that I hadn't really considered in regards to these NDEs, because we're always hearing in these NDEs how people, you know, they hear colors, they smell sound. It's just like your senses are involved with, with, uh, are like supercharged in these NDEs. And yes. Terrence is, the, what Terrence is explaining um, in regards to, you know, what he's trying to show the world proves how proves that that is a real thing so like well, yes. elements have they ha they 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 harmonize in certain keys and those keys are associated with colors as well so it's interesting that when people are in this detached spiritual 
state well, that's that... that's what we've been explaining over the yeah. last year that the spiritual side of things is the real reality our right. physical right. manifestation that we walk around right now is a dumbed down since senses are down version it's not until the other side that we actually truly experience it um, exactly. and <laughs> That was something right. I, I I didn't put two and two together until you know Terrence Howard started talking about it though. Yeah, me neither. I mean, he actually he actually communicated it in a way that I could understand because prior to that, it, it just you know hearing people talk about their NDEs and smelling colors and and hearing you know and and hearing you know it, it's, it's just like it was kind of too yeah it just it was just like in the fantasy and, and but with when hit with him associating it with the elements and and the way the universe works and stuff like that it's just like a whole new new level of understanding anyway i just wanted to to throw that out there please by all means uh no let's, let's it, get back it, to your nde it's it's awesome though there's going to be a lot to expand on that at another time oh yeah well my ndes um that i recall um all weren't were not the seventh level they were other planes and the last one i actually got to do what the bible said because i've wanted to do it and i know it's it's written in the scripture that it it happened people trans they teleported and they communicated with others how they did that i did not know nor was I going to take drugs to try to find out in the wood uh, that the other people have done. Right. So that being said, my last NDE experience, I got to visit five different people, my daughter included, because um, my last words to her on the phone, because um, I've had about six operations and out of the six operations, three of them have been NDE experiences. So right. she, when I say juggalos never die, wicked clowns never die, she's like, that's not comforting, Dad. You die. I go, yeah, but we don't stay dead. <laughs> wow. So um, I have that going for me, and, that, and I visited her and comforted her, and she felt my presence. And the other four people also felt my presence when I came back and contacted her and go, did – you notice something weird happening in on this date around this time <laughs> they're like oh that was you <laughs> so how would you do if I so if i understand what you're saying you're so you you were detached from your body during these operations and you went and visited people who were in the physical realm is that what you're saying yes. or did you visit them yes. in heaven somewhere so no i actually visit the i i i described what was going on in their household at the time and everything else it was very very detailed it's something i could never do never have happened N nothing is just like okay i'm either really hallucinating that this has happened and these things are real or um it was and um i need to confirm it so i started calling people and they're like um yeah that freaks me out and going okay thank you you're just confirming i'm not nuts <laughs> you're so, not comforting that, me any but i'm and not happened crazy three times so was it the same experience all three times no uh the other two times were like downloads um, of understanding the Bible, understanding how I fit in the grand scheme of everything and how the world is going to unfold um, and all these events. I never got dates. I only got what was going to happen. So I would be telling people, this is what's going to happen, Hit this, and this is what's going to happen. And then I'd be like, it'd be like prophetic tellings but I wasn't a prophet. It was it all came from the NDEs, and it took months yeah, for it. me to I to process Christopher, everything. Your volume, Christopher, your volume's turned down. It took me so, Fred, while, uh, like so months what, to figure it all out scripturally. What do you What do you think is next? Okay, in God's calendar, 
I see sudden destruction needing to happen. That means right now we're only in the birth pains. I'm not negating CO1 and CO2 being open currently. However, the other two I don't see globally yet. Well, here's no here. knowing that I only see us in the birth pains because the tribulation God says will start when He steps in for Israel, and sudden destruction happens, and everyone puts down their weapons and this and that, and it becomes global peace. Because of this, they are going to attribute it to the Antichrist or the anti-whatever, but it's going to be God that stepped in on Israel's behalf, like he said he was going to. Yeah, it sounds like you're collapsing a whole lot of timeline stuff into into a short <laughs> period of time there. Uh, so, so the next, so the next thing you're you're. It sounds like you're saying that the next thing in the timeline is uh, the Great Tribulation, the sudden the sudden destruction for when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction. The, that's the one I'm talking about. The the Great Tribulation. No, the Great Tribulation happens starts when the bad guy steps into the temple. So okay. there's three, the three guy. years. The well, there we go. <laughs> when he steps into um, the temple, that is when the Bible says the elect are to flee to the wilderness. Well, I'm already here in the wilderness preparing and <laughs> getting to know getting to know God better and understanding how am I going to help these people that are coming? How am I going to do this? How do I intercede for these people and what's coming on the earth? When, it, when it's time, he will. He'll tell you. Yes. Time. And he does give me tidbits and other things yeah. throughout. And it's all through a life of doing worship and worshiping through the radio. My morning show it's not a worship show per se, it's more new releases. The other shows that I do throughout the day and overnight are worship shows. So I, I have my, mor uh, I my morning awesome. show is for the new releases and the underground artists, and everything else is for anyone else. You're just trying to get the word out in your own way. Cool. <laughs> I, mean, it, it, it's, it's, I mean, that's great. Um, one thing that uh, it seemed like is starting to play out is, watch, well, we had mentioned that judgment could be coming within a 40-day time period, then further. Um, mm -hmm. And on the 40th day, Iran's president uh, was no Oh, longer. man, yeah. If you, guys, if you guys haven't seen that latest video from Jonathan Cohen, The Twelve Signs, that is an amazing video dudes dude is yeah, legit shared it. on his yeah dude yeah. is legit on his details I, I think we probably have mentioned a couple of those things but he goes through and does a really good job <laughs> portraying how bad it is to go to go get to be against israel right now so you know well, he, on, he's, he he it, nailed it man remember yeah. the other remember the other prime minister or whatever happened to him from turkey cursed yeah, yeah. Israel right on camera and fell Died. over dead oh. yeah, instantly. Fell over. <laughs> yep. Well, yeah, and the same thing. So on April 23rd, uh, Abraham uh, Raisi did the same thing. He uh, came out against Israel and then 40 days later, taken out. Go watch that video from Jonathan Conrad. Well, uh, you know what? Yeah, I'll find it. No, and it, post it, it, in. it is. I've shared it everywhere, brother. Okay. Well, I'll share it, yeah. with, I'll share it in the chat right now, too. Yeah, it's it's really man, it's just another example of his his stuff being right on point. Yeah. Though guys, we had been talking about this for weeks after the eclipse because that was the common thing that we were hearing from Rachel and some of the other folks that had uh had whatever they feel like was uh, relative information, but they, it was things that were all lining up. Now, here's the thing, that was supposed to just be the start of the judgment and the judgment is supposed to be for the wicked. Yeah. So it's, it's, this could be a, a very interesting time period. 
there's a lot of folks that have been saying that there's going to be a lot of exposure. Uh, a lot of the wicked is going to be exposed. That's what and, it seems like. I mean, that was the sense I got from listening to Jonathan Kahn that like, yeah. right, right now it's just like, if you, you know, if you kill with the sword, you shall be killed with the sword. If you, you know, it's just like, it's coming back on you now. So now it's, man, it's just more evidence that we're in the end time events. Uh, I, yeah, I want to go one step further th than that and um, point out that there was two types of cicadas. The mm -hmm. 13, the 13 is a representation of the evil that you just spoke about. The 17 is God's glory and his power that's supposed to come on the church at this time also. His Shekinah glory. Mm -hmm. for where the church witnesses to this world that is in decay. Yeah. Have those so have the have cicadas started those... hatching? I actually haven't I haven't actually looked up uh, the cicadas. I know we were last time I looked up that we were still waiting for them to hatch. No, they've hatched. They Okay. <laughs> At least the the 13 ones have. I don't know about the 17s. I haven't been watching them, and I haven't seen much on the um, interweb about it. Okay. But cool. Uh, so everything that Satan does and God does, there's going to be a blessing too for the sure. church, and we have to walk in it and step in it. It's it's there for the taking. Like Chris uh, ha has just experienced um, being baptized in the Holy Spirit. It's a free gift. It is, man. No, Christopher's awesome been too. baptized all of his life. He's he just recently got water baptized. Yeah. Well, here's but the thing. I, I have a my perspective on that is that it, 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 you you might be right, watchful, or I don't think I was of the age of uh, con consent to have made a difference, but. You, you may be right, because there's a lot of cases of uh, folks being younger and it had saved their life or soul or whatnot. So. Oh, yeah. With your with your parents being in the ministry and you being raised with that, uh, knowing your heart, <laughs> probably, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure you've, you, you've been, you know, following Yeshua most of your life. Yeah. Well, I mean, there there might be like an anointing covering because of my parents. So, you, I mean, I, I'm just speaking it. not so much because. Um, other than what you said, because of who is uh, baptizing you and such, oh. and and the, and the anointing and uh, what you're talking about with the water serpents and everything else, that was that was pretty interesting. I have to say, if I would not have seen that from my own eyes, that would have been a struggle to uh, say. Uh, but that was, I mean. I remember the guy was going down in the water and he had the last thing that went in the water was his wrist that had a snake tattoo around it. And then they came up and that snake tattoo was around Dalton's arm and then it let go and swam off. Wow. And we all looked at it like, whoa. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So. The, wow. Yeah, it's, I don't, you know, I don't know what to say to that, other than that's exactly what happened. Um, that's that's the power of the Holy Spirit that's available for the church. Right now, same as judgments coming on the wicked, there's a blessing for the church. I, I, th I think that you're right that the supernatural capabilities that veil has lifted, and if folks will truly step up, Oh, we lost him. Did he get raptured? Yeah, he got raptured. Hey, Fred! check your signal, dude. Check your signal. Yeah. Okay. There he is. Okay. Well, hey, Fred, we're gonna wrap it up with you tonight. It was a it was a pleasure having you, brother. Yeah. We love Thank we love you having, for having you in the chat. Me. We love we, we we love hearing your story and uh, really appreciate you. Uh, out there on the street, worshiping and, and reaching people. I wish um, I, I endeavor to do that more myself, yeah. uh, you know, get out at, on the actual streets 
Uh, this is this is the best I can do right now is getting on here and, and broadcasting on YouTube, which I think more of us should be doing this. Actually, Christopher, that was something I wanted to talk about is actually, you know, seeing what we can do to help train people to get, get on YouTube more. Yeah, oh, um, I mean, be, oh, before I go, may I offer uh, um, Truth Burns social page a, a free gift for two witnesses? Sure. Um, offline or uh, um, in the private message, I can give you um, a link for the live page that you can use for okay. um, everything to run that the, the radio station runs through. So when you go off at night, instead of always having to post it, they will just go to the live and hear the worship music or the Bible being um, read out because I do audio. So I have the Bible, some books of the Bible being played at night, or I have worship music going on. So hmm. I can offer you the link, and, and the, you can set it up on the live aspect so people can click it for free. Yeah, yeah, and no, I'd so, send it to us. I'd love to, I'd love to check it out. So explain again. I was trying to follow. Um, uh, I, I wasn't understanding, oh. but it seems seems neat. Okay, with me doing online radio station, um, and I'm being I'm a nonprofit, so I only go by donations and what people can do and have been able to do. That being said, I have the capability of networking because I'm a bona fide radio state online radio station networking with other radio platforms and I also have my own URL that can be used for people's web pages or okay. put into their gaming stream where they have their own I'm the radio station for their gaming so on and so forth and they don't get hit for copyrights because I'm a bona right. fide station. Well, I mean, it's kind of neat. You could witness the folks uh, as they go about their day, you know, and play their games and whatnot. Yeah. The day, the evening. <laughs> well, uh, we have yeah. we we as uh, when it, we're in heaven, and we read revelations. We're in worship twenty four seven. We need to practice now. <laughs> all right well yeah. hey it was awesome yes, having you man and yeah. um uh, we'll look thank forward you to for it having again. me yeah thanks fred keep up the good no work problem. later thank brother you. god bless you brother that was awesome yeah he's cool i uh i need to do more street stuff i i used to spend a lot of time on the street witnessing to people and i haven't done it in quite a while I need to get yeah. back into that. You know, there's something about that that there's a feeling you get that the no other type of witnessing can fulfill that type of feeling too. It well, is, um, it is. It, well, yeah. You're right. There's there's so many homeless and there's so many destitute right now that it, I'm just constantly reminded of those parables that Jesus talks about in Matthew 25 about when when he, when he was hungry we f you fed him oh, when he was man, naked that's... you clothed him when he was in prison you visited him that's that his verse, biggest thing it's, yeah that the, verse convicts people... me it, it, it's just like man i am i doing enough it's it's like am i doing enough to help people because when you're helping them you're it's as if you're doing it to Jesus yeah i mean the less fortunate the widows these people that societal circumstances have held them down yep. they are the ones that are going to get lifted up in the next life i yep. mean for he has a, a a big soft heart for those who have fallen on their luck because yep. who knows who that will be and some folks uh, are very giving and really go out of their way to make sure that if there is someone down on their luck, that anything they can do to help them is done. But then there's folks that are not. Um, yeah. So yeah, I need to find the right way to do it. Um, last time we tried, we were we were putting together care packages, and somebody actually stopped me um, because we we were going down to Portland. And this was when, which I don't know if you guys are aware of this. Portland has actually been cleaned up a little bit. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't mentioned this in a while, uh, but the the Portland, Oregon, has finally actually started, uh, you know, 
doing something about the 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 homeless on the street um so in in a positive way so they've made more resources available um and they've uh, you know they're actually being proactive which is really good uh, i don't know if that's happening i haven't checked to see if that's happening in other parts of the country but it's a major shift from what it's been for the last three and a half years i can tell you that um but during when it was really bad we were working on putting together care packages and somebody stopped me because they said huh. they they don't they don't want the care packages all you're going to do all this is going to do is end up as litter on the street so they they were people were telling me really? if you really want to help them you've got to donate to like the shelters and the places where they have to I act, feel like actively it's a scam. go it is yeah it was a total scam because they all had food stamps they all had access to food and clothes clothing um, the clothing places won't even actually wouldn't, wouldn't even actually give them good stuff because they don't even bother wow. trying to clean weren't even bother like cleaning the stuff so yeah they they, uh, they they they're they're taken care of by the state yep so it's a real challenge to reach people on the street because a lot of them were being paid to be there a lot of them you know were were there by choice and and had everything they need so it's like when you think about how do you help the people who are homeless, how do you help the people who are hungry and naked when they're not hungry, when they're not naked, they're just there by choice. Uh, that took me a little while to realize that. So, um, You're absolutely right about that. Um, the study suggests that over 70% of the homeless actually want to be homeless. Yeah. Yeah, and I understand that there are other spiritual implications of that, like, you know, the, yeah. the spiritually naked, those who don't have Christ, you know, you know, Church of Laodicea, Luke, the lukewarm people, you know, you could argue that they're naked because they don't have the armor of God. Um, they're spiritually anemic because they don't have, you know, a clear understanding of Scripture, uh, or the Holy Spirit. They don't have the fruit of the Spirit. Um, so, you know, that, that can be interpreted multi at multiple levels. Right. Um, but I like the mentality of, of, you know, challenging myself to help those who are inconvenient, uncomfortable, those that people would normally avoid. Uh, yeah. and, and you and me, you know, we, we, th th that's how we kind of got started on this, you know, last year is we were, you know, t trying to reach the people who were difficult on Facebook. Uh, it you know, really that's like that's that's actually uh, <laughs> interesting. Yeah, you're right. Um, I'm not sure if you've ever told the story. Well, I think you have, but yeah, we've it, we've talked about it a little bit here and there. Um, it started but, on it, Facebook. Uh, Watchful would post something, and you know people start chiming in, and then it was, you know, that's how I, it I called it picking fights, but it's not that doesn't really justify what yeah, we were doing. Picking fights. It was, it was well. Just, it was because we were. I, I was. I was choosing my words carefully to to encourage heated discussion to about topics. To get a uh, reaction of the flesh. Yeah, to get a reaction and, and start a conversation. Um, so, yeah. in, in a way, it's it's a good way of picking a fight because you want people to defend their position. So you, you make a statement that is going to challenge somebody's beliefs, and then you. You put them in a position to defend why they believe that. And by doing that, you can, you know, the idea was to help people. It was either to for me to change my position or to help them change their position, to help them come to a, a better understanding of what it is that they believe, or at least to investigate why they believe stuff. Because so many of us have these have these beliefs, beliefs Whoops. that we have no idea why it is we believe them. It's just something that we were taught as a child and we've held on to our entire lives. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I think there's been a couple people that have commented that I haven't been here. Just to clarify, well, we've been pretty vocal about what I've been doing. I had a yeah. We fired Christopher. He's back. On, he's <laughs> only here temporary. Temporarily. Uh, nobody. Nobody likes him anymore. So we've just uh, kicked him off the show. <laughs> there you go. Uh, but <laughs> no, we had. Um, I told everybody that I had a long wedding. Yeah. And there'll be more of those in the future. Not not any in the next month or so, but um, that's, I mean, I did this every week. So the fact that I don't have uh, them next week and the week after, that's a true blessing because it's tough, man. You're totally yeah. submersed in the world. I mean, I know, and that's the I know thing. I've, 
I've missed some shows too. It's you know, it's it's the unfortunate situation that we find ourselves in. Is we have we have stuff that takes us away from this. We would love to do this full time, uh, yeah. but we're just not we're not there yet. There's other parts of our life that are still attached to this world. And it's not by through it's not through our you know, it's not part of the plan. It's just unfortunately, um in time those things will detach, but some folks are not ready for that yet. And yeah. I I know it's an unfortunate truth, but I think for many people, and if this is you, if you have a spouse or a family member that has not been able to detach from the world when this shaking happens and there's going to be a shaking those folks on the sidelines or the lukewarm ones waiting they're going to get shook to one side or the other it's going to be a wake up i truly think that that's what the shaking is about is you know the last few years god has been trying to reach us and Everybody that's here right now, we've all had that same calling because it's the only thing that our body wants to do, really, for you know the time when we're awake. And so it's relatively easy to identify us because that's what we are consumed with. Yeah. Other uh, other folks, if they're not in this position, you know, they love God, but they're not going to sit here and talk about it all day long, every day. You know. Um, unfortunately yeah. unfortunately so although along the along that lines i've been we've been trying to figure out how we can torment the world <laughs> and trying to come up with ideas <coughs> on how we can kind of scale what we're doing um right now we're doing it the, the best we can for for our own show and platform um but we're open to ideas for how we can help others um do what we're doing because i think this is a really good model to where yeah. if you can find somebody who's, you know, you get along with well, um, who's not the same as you. You don't want you don't want somebody who's identical to you. You you need you need that balance. Um, it's funny because I've been listening to Terrence all day talk about balance. Um, it's it's really important. You need somebody who balances you out. Find somebody who balances you out. You gotta be a, you gotta be YouTube yoked. Channel. You have to be you gotta be yoked together. Yeah. Uh, but um, and that comes man, that, that's you, that's with life. That's your wife, you know, your show, your business. Everybody's yeah, be right. Exactly. Uh, but you know, I was thinking we could, you know, if we can. I know, as if we have all the time in the world. But it would be awesome if we could like start doing classes. Ooh, maybe we could do the lessons on the on the um, on the website for uh, you know all the stuff we've learned about doing a channel, uh, so that we can kind of help guide people into doing this because it's really not that hard it really comes down to just making the time we, to do it i think it we got lucky i think that god really had a big hand in our show well, of course but it's the, the, the things you know the one of the words that i've ever received was he had said that you'll know you're on the right path when that path is, has few obstructions and pitfalls it a feel it a feel natural he said the signs i will give you when you're on the wrong path with the wrong people it's just things will start happening bad things will happen stuff that won't make sense these will be signs hmm. to revisit your current path and he says he does this for everybody in the world and most people ignore them and I bet you you could think back on any decisions that you've made over the years of the signs that were given to you that you ignored. Um, I, I know we all can. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I, I've ignored stuff. I think that's part of life and learning. I think God is constantly chastening us and working with us to get us to listen to him and follow his... Oh, listen, listen to us and hear his voice better. Yeah. I mean... It... it it, some folks move at a faster pace or the other. I mean, I'm 50 years old, and I think in the last few months I'm starting to understand things on a different level. Um, 50 years, <laughs> you know, um, it's a, yeah. it's. I think it has a lot to do with someone's time that they invest. I think the more you you work on that personal relationship, whether that be reading the Bible or fasting or whatever works best for you. 
You know, it's yeah. some folks get closer to him through different variances. But the more that you do, and this is what I've noticed, is the more supernatural things start to seem, if that makes any sense. Um, I'm not sure mm. if that does, but that's just how it feels. Um, you know, it's funny, the more I learn, the less things seem supernatural, the, the more they seem, they seem more like reality. So the things that I that I used to see as fantasy, like people being healed, now seems just like everyday reality. Um, it is. It's um, it's a curve. <laughs> well, think about it. Also, it's it's how they do the predictive programming. They kind oh, of. What do you mean? Really, if, if anything, like what you're saying is you're you're starting to grow used to these things not being so fantastical anymore think about the other craziness that the public is exposed to through movies and predictive programming to kind of take the edges off for the mind of the public when something actually happens um no, that's not exactly what i was saying so what i was saying <laughs> is okay it, Things I didn't understand seemed like fantasy. And, and as I've grown older and learned more about God um, and the creation, uh, the less it seems like fantasy and the more it seems like reality. Does that make sense? Yeah, to where it's be of course. It's becoming more real to me. Um, to where it's just like, you know, if somebody sees someone healed, it seems like a miracle. But when you see those miracles all the time, it just becomes like regular everyday life. Kind of a thing. Well, yeah. It, prior to 2020 for me, I'm not sure where my mind was at. I know how I acted because I can reflect back on my behavior. Yeah. But I struggled to understand my position. You know, yeah. what were my goals at that time? Because um, it's hard to explain, but... That there was such a difference in you know the forecast and outlook and what your priorities were. <laughs> oh yeah. How do things change when you put put this into the equation? Um, yeah. Uh, one of the one of the things I liken it to a good example is is uh, you know in 2020 when when everyone's felt activated, I I I reverted back to my younger 20 year old self. To where I was like, su I was super aggressive. I mean, like when it came to witnessing, I would talk to I would talk to everybody and the rocks and the plants around them. I just was so <laughs> I was so on fire for God that that's all I wanted to talk the about. The rocks and the plants. And I, I kid you not. That and, and, no, and I get it. That's one of the reasons why I was so gung ho on being aggressive about revisiting people that you know that had walked away that I wanted to go help and go you know share share the revelation that you know we're in the end times and here's the evidence you know i just wanted to tell the world and you know i, I hadn't actually started a youtube channel hadn't even really thought about a youtube channel i just was i was ready to go knock on doors you know walk on on campuses go to churches and just start you know shouting from the streets and and god literally had to like put the brakes on throw the collar on me and go you need to remember you're an adult <laughs> <laughs> yeah watchful and i had go ahead yeah it, it, it's just because i just had to remember that there's a better way so it's just like you know you can be on fire for god and, and the creator but you there you have to practice wisdom uh and that's that that's really what i was reminded of is that or have you know, a, it's, having a partner that balances well yeah Someone have a partner that, that balances rain, rain you and, in yeah, and it's 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 not so much about like uh, it's not so much as like throwing scriptural stones at people to wake them up. It's more about opening a dialogue and really reaching people in their understanding. So it's just like I've had more success with with YouTube and you know sharing things that I'm studying and you know opening conversations on facebook with people than i ever had throwing stones at them on the street you know because like i'm all for the street evangelism you know where you're out there and you're telling people you need to repent do you know jesus is coming soon do, you know are you saved you know it's just it's like i've had more success um with honest dialogue than i have you know with with the actual like really aggressive loud stuff 
Um, so it's like when I was a child, I spake as a child. <laughs> no, it's, um, you're right. It's, um, it, it depends on uh, your, your tactics and your delivery. Um, yeah. but it, like you said, it's more about forming that, that quick relationship and finding common ground. Um, yeah. because the other stuff, they've heard it all before. They, they've yeah. got a shield up to it. Well, yeah, and that's the thing is so many people have heard that before. So it's like we have to find new ways to reach people. And you know, something that I've been thinking about is, is how do you reach these people who have been hurt by churches? That's kind of been really big on my heart. And, you know, you know how, do you, how do you reach these people? It's, it's not by revisiting the things that hurt them. You have to... Uh, here, here's some, we all need to learn to apologize for people we've hurt. That's that's probably the right way to say it because um, there's a lot of us who have, in our immaturity, hurt other people. And Absolutely. part of loving your neighbor as yourself is, in the same way that you forgive yourself, you also have to learn how to forgive other people. Um, and yeah. honestly, we should start a campaign of forgiveness. That's really what I wanted to tell the ministry I grew up with. Is number yeah, one, right. I forgive them for what they did. It for what had happened to me, uh, but also that like they need to start practicing forgiveness because they've hurt people, and a lot of churches I think have hurt you're people. You're a hundred percent right. We need to start a campaign of forgiveness. Amen. Um, seriously, that yeah. is the biggest obstacle in life is the forgiveness. So yep. there's that is the most important ingredient next to love. Is the forgiveness. Yeah. You, you don't want to be that person that doesn't forgive because it, it, it makes your body toxic. It, it does. It, it does. It does just weird things to your body mentally and physically. Yeah. It literally I've, does. I've done it. I've, I've had it happen to myself. I've seen people that I love dearly, uh, you know, how... The forgiveness is really, really important. Like, if there was anything that I would think is the most important element that folks have to wrap their head around is the forgiveness. Yeah. You cannot continue on where we are going with unforgiveness in your heart. I know this for a fact. I know that's a bold statement, but folks that know... They, they know that, that this is true. Yeah. Um, and, and, it's, and, it's, and it's tough for some folks. There is some f things with many folks that they don't know if they can bring themselves to forgive. I get it. But... Um, a, a good way to start is, I'm sorry for anything I've done to cause the problems. Because <laughs> you have to forgive yourself. You have to recognize that sometimes you're part of the problem. Um, forgive yourself, cast the beam out of your own eye before you go trying to cast it out of someone else's. If we all, if we all consider the things that we've, that we've done to ourselves and others and, you know, learn to forgive those things, I think we can move forward. Um, You're absolutely so right. It's poison to hold on to animosity, it is. hatred, I, it, it, pain. If it, it is. And when you hold on to it, it wears you down over time. Makes you sour. It, I just, that's the biggest thing that I learned through my journey from trying to lose the flesh is before there was so many worldly things that I held on to that gave me a, a predisposed disposition uh, in life, depending on the topic because of, what uh, emotional baggage I had for that topic. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. yeah, letting go of everything, because there's a lot, if you step back from the reality and think of all your relationships and everything that um, you have cooked in life, there's going to be some that, you know, you may need to revisit. Yeah. But uh, I really think, though, it's, emotionally and mentally and spiritually getting those those things sorted out really brings you to at peace 
One of, one of the most helpful things that I think I've really kind of learned in the last couple of years is constant is is constant forgiveness. So even I, I almost allow myself to be hurt, if that makes sense, by, you know, by seeking out um, difficult people who because Christopher and I deal with a lot of rock slingers that, that call <laughs> us names and, and put us down and when when you stop letting that stuff hurt you and and you find ways to tactfully redirect it um you can really diffuse situations and and reach people uh, and but it, it has to start with self-sacrifice one. you have to you have to kill your ego and your pride and sometimes it means not you know always being right in the conversation sometimes it just means shutting up and listening letting it's, letting people tell you what they think and then asking questions you know there's um, I think that's part of maturity is is immaturity is 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 thinking that you have to hit, hit people over the head with scripture and prove that you're right. And and maturity is listening to people where they're at, hearing what they're saying and learning to ask really good questions to get them to you know, prove it to themselves, whether what they believe is right or wrong. Right. And that comes with a lot of self-sacrifice. Killing your pride, killing your ego is comes with a lot of self-sacrifice. It really does, and I mean, it's 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 the truth. It's the truth. So I, I recommend everybody pick fights on Facebook. <laughs> well, that's how and, we got started. And, and, I mean, yeah, and, and learn how to and learn how to and learn how to deal with the th- those stones that get thrown at you, in a in a nice, loving, forgive forgiving way. And, and, and by picking fights, I, I mean don't be a jerk. You know, you and know, that's make, literally what happened. Though we would. Yeah. He would make a post and someone would just go after him like a rattlesnake. And then um, one of us would come in with a, a soft explanation and it would just go round and round. And there'd be a hundred comments before the day was out. But Yeah, some, um, some of my favorite tactics were misquoting scripture. Uh, one, of, one of my favorite ones that got the most reactions was um, money is the root of all evil. That's a fun one. Because people get on there and like get all angry with you. It's the love of money that's the root of all evil. <laughs> oh, is it really? Start a conversation. But it, um, it would it would go on and on and uh, eventually there was quite a following that was. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, we had been we had been talking about doing a show for a year or two. Um, yeah, but it was all in God's time. I, I I couldn't explain any of it. It just started falling together like this. Um. And yeah. that's exactly how, you know, he, he's explained it to me, how things will go when you're on the right path. You know, some things yep. just have a lot of friction and it seems like there's problem after problem and obstacle after obstacle when you're on that path. That should be a sign. You know, you may want to just perk up and pay a little more attention to what's going on. Whereas those ones where everything just naturally started happening, it's... um God has a chosen path for everybody. And this yeah. is one thing I understand as well, is there is a best path for every person. If you follow the Lord, the more you follow him, the more you end up on the smoothest sailing path that's available for, you know, what he had planned for you. And Amen. I guess that's the easiest, or the most simple way of, saying what uh, I understand when it comes to his path in the scripture is everybody has a path that he has maximized. Yeah. But you well, and we're, and we're all at different stages of maturity too. That's one of the reasons yeah. why it's so important to number one, forgive self-sacrifice, kill your ego um, and love your neighbor as yourself is because, you know, other members in that, in the body of Christ could be at a different level than you. Uh, that's no reason right. to, to, to not to, to consider them unequally yoked. Um, you know, the, the, the unequally yoked scripture is, is about unbelievers. It's not about people in the body. And just because somebody doesn't believe the same doctrine as you doesn't mean they're an unbeliever. When you look at those seven churches that are talked about in the book of revelation, they, the, the candlesticks all surround Yeshua. They all surround the son of God. So they all have something in common. So anybody who has Jesus as their Lord, you have something in common. You're of the same body. Don't dismiss them just because of some stupid doctrinal issue. Um, yeah. Those things will come in time. It, this is true, and f- folks are going to be at different 
places in their spiritual journey. Yeah. If if someone is misunderstood, help them understand. Do it lovingly, though. Yeah. Help them understand that everything happens for a reason, in my opinion. That's just my perspective that everything does. Other, some folks disagree, but that's just my take on it. So, yep. um, let's see here. Well, that was a very interesting interview. I want to start finding something in this book to read each night even if it's for five minutes this thing is pretty fascinating sure um, all the different info you know it's why don't we read um first thessalonians 5 so that came up tonight in the conversation about when it's safe and safety then sudden destruction okay first thessalonians Peace and safety, then sudden destruction. <laughs> Guys, don't forget to like and share the show. Um, so we haven't told anybody this, but we did get a warning from YouTube for a video, which I'm not going to say which video it is. Uh, we're probably going to start a section on the website for the videos that we can't do on YouTube anymore. Uh, but please make sure you're liking and subscribing and sharing the show. Share it on your Facebook, share it on your X, your Instagrams, anywhere you can. If you like what we're doing and you like the content, please, please help us out because uh, YouTube is not too happy with the content <laughs> of our show. So if you're happy with the content of our show, uh, let's yeah. let's show up YouTube. Yeah. And, you know, if you're not on our social media platform, it really is um, it's turned out to be just an awesome place for everybody to fellowship. Um, yeah. So if, if you haven't, make sure you register on the social platform. It, it'll be your new home because it's, it's really just an awesome place. Lots of Most of our community is there, and there's no censorship. Yep. So, yeah. All right, so First Thessalonians what? Five. Uh, is it First Thessalonians or Second Thessalonians? It's First Thessalonians. The day of the Lord. Now concerning these times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves are fully aware that that day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night, while people are saying there is peace and security. Then sudden destruction will come upon those as labor pains, come upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you are not in darkness, brothers, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of the light, children of the day. We are not of the night, of the darkness. Hmm. So then let yeah. us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be of sober mind. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for helmet of hope and salvation. For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up, just as you are doing. Wow. Yep. Build each other up, guys. It's true, though. Everything in that was, was spot on. The build each other up is such an important part. Because your yeah. peers, they are torn down, you know, through the day. You know, they, you know, that reminds me, it's interesting, reading that in the Suffer reminded me of Matthew 24, the uh, faithful servant and the evil servant, um, because the contrast between children of light and children of evil, the faithful servant and the evil servant is, the evil servant is the one who, uh, because the master is delayed, starts getting drunk uh, starts beating his fellow servants, starts eating and drinking with the other drunkards. Just like, it's just like, ah, he's not coming. You know what? You were wrong. It, it's just like, uh, it's interesting because it, we're told explicitly not to do that. We're told to be 
children of light. And it, it also kind of reminds me of, you know, keeping your lamp filled with oil, uh, you know, being that Holy Spirit. Um, no, you're and, absolutely you know, you, right. You've got the, the, the 10 bridesmaids, five that have enough oil and five that don't. You don't want to be you don't want to be the ones with not enough oil in your lamp. Uh, so it, it's so important to stay active and and don't start beating your fellow servants. Don't start throwing your lots in with the drunkards. You know, don't don't be you know literally and 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 spiritually. You know, don't spend your time in the bar uh, unless you're witnessing there. But as long as you don't have a problem. But you know, you know what I mean. It's just like don't <laughs> those who are spiritually drunk who you know all they want to do is argue and fight and throw stones and put people oh. down and and point out problems in other people rather than building building people up. You know what I mean. Yes, and we've them. seen we've seen plenty of those, uh, the religious Rottweilers. You know yeah. what I was reading that was not out of the Sefer. That was out of uh, the key word Hebrew Study Bible. I'm looking up. Um, I got them confused. Yeah. Well, it's that was a what very good read. That was a really good read, though. Yeah, it was. Uh, I'm curious what uh, it says in the Sefer, though. Yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. They're both black books. <laughs> yeah. Well, you had, it's funny because you had the Sefer in your hand, so you had to have set that one down. And no, I, up I did, <laughs> and I don't know why I did. I'm it, first Habit. Yeah. Going, so, going back to your favorite one, like, the, the, you know, this one feels better. It's got a nice leather binding. <laughs> <laughs> so what am I looking at in First Thessalonians? First Thessalonians 5. Okay, but of the times and the appointed seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write to you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of Yah so comes as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as the travail upon a woman with child. And they shall not escape, but ye, brethren, are not in darkness." that the day you should overtake you as a thief. Ye are the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be of sober mind. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. It essentially looks like it says almost the exact same thing. Yeah. So there is so some of these there are variations though, um, and it'd be lo it'd be awesome to see these variations. Yeah. Uh, read read uh, eight and nine there. Yeah, that's what I was actually. For let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love. And for a helmet, the hope of salvation. And for Elohim has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord. Yes, exactly. Yeshua. It was a long, yeah, Hamashiach. I, I, I was afraid I would mispronounce it because Yeshua I would. Hamashiach. There you go. Who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we shall live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together, edify one another, even as um, you do, and beseech your brethren. I'm not sure if I said that right. Um, sure. Your brethren, to know them with laboring among you, and that you are all one of Yah who admonish you. You are to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Huh. It says it very, it, that's pretty different though, but it's. It's really yeah. underscoring the importance of lifting up your brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. And that's what I'm taking from this is to, you know, really um, lift up your brother and your sisters that are putting themselves in the front line, trying to help. Let them know that it's noticed and that it's appreciated. I think that's yeah. what I get from that. Number 14. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that they are, are unruly, comfort from the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient towards all men, see that not 
none render evil from evil to any man, but ever follow that which is good, both amongst yourselves to all men. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and always giving thanks to Elohim. Hmm. Hmm. Essentially, awesome. essentially still the same. It may be a slight different translation, but you can see how lifting up your brethren is extremely important. Um, yeah. It really hammered home that. So. Yep, don't be like the drunkard. Don't repay evil for evil. Put on the breastplate of uh, faith and love or the hel in the helmet of salvation. That is pretty um, cool. Yep, quench not the spirit, despise not the prophesying, prove all things, hold fast to that which is good. Uh, abstain from all appearance of evil is in there. Hmm. Um, hey, give an example yep. of that. Uh, abstaining from all appearance of evil. Ego yeah. and pride are the, are the, are the biggest ones. Um, when, when you're doing things to be prideful, to be right, to be seen, um, you know, for you're, you're taking away the glory from God. It's like, we, we should, we should be looking for every opportunity to give the glory to God, not ourselves. Um, and a lot of people Hands fall prey down. to that. Yeah, they, they really do. They, um, I'm not even sure how to say it, but folks, um, a big, I think that's a big part of the, the, the arguments where people want to be right, because I think we naturally have an inclination to want to be right and prove it. And that's, it's counterproductive to actually reach people, uh, by, by fighting to prove that you're right. You're actually, um, you're ignoring the other person where you should be spending more time listening to other people and what they're saying. Yeah. Um, why do they feel the way they do? They have, yeah. Why do you feel the way you, they do? What do you believe? Why do you believe what you believe? I mean, you can do so much through asking questions rather than making statements. Um, but the appearance of evil is, I'm always right. I know everything. Listen to me because I'm ordained. Oh, man, I've, I've made so many ordained ministers mad because I refuse to call them reverend. Uh, you, you know, it's just like, why can't we just talk as, as, you know, members of the body of Christ? People get so uptight about who they are in Christ that it's just like, don't you understand that, like, your insistence on your ego and pride, you, you know, your insistence on who you are in Christ is, is an appearance of evil. It's just like you want people to worship you, not God. Yeah. And some folks have a hard time wrapping their head around that. Yeah. Well, tonight I fight awesome. every, I fight every day to, to, to hide more in the, in the background. Like I don't want people to worship me. Uh, you know, I, I, I want to be an example it's just like, you know, I, you know, I try to be a good example to where if you want to see like, okay, how does watchful do something? Uh, I'm, I'm okay with that, but it's just like, I don't want people to be, you know, bending down and worshiping me as if I'm somebody special because I feel like we need to constantly build each other up. Look, you're special too. We're all special. <laughs> None of us are more special than the other person. None of us sit above the other person. You know, don't assume that you sit in the place of honor. You're better off sitting in the back and, and being called up to the place of honor rather than assuming you're the one who's in the place of honor because surely there's somebody who's more honorable than you. And I think yeah. that that's probably the right attitude in all things. True. Well, man, it was awesome. I got to go deal with the babies. Yeah, I've, I've been kind of fighting not bringing up Terrence, because I, I know that. That's yeah, a big we'll do a whole hole. show on that. I, well, yeah, I, I want to um, finish watching the stuff that I was watching. Yeah. It, uh, so tomorrow we have Christian Widner on again. Um, he's really, really smart. So you missed him the last show that he was on. You were doing another wedding. And, uh, and man, he is super smart. So he, last time he was on, he talked about the hidden temple, which hmm. he, he made the argument that the, te the temple. The physical temple doesn't need to be built. It already exists in Jerusalem. The temple on the mount, it, everything that is needed for somebody to, to go to the temple of God and declare himself God is already in place. There's a, The building does not actually have to be built. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it just needs to be a, it just needs to be an altar, right? Yeah. And, and it's all there. It's like, yeah, yeah, everything is in place for, for that to take place. So uh, it'll be, mm -hmm. so, 
we'll probably do a recap on that, but I'm kind of curious. I ended up talking, we ended up, we should have probably stayed on the air last time he was on because me and him ended up talking for another like two hours after the show, uh, just because there's just so much ground to cover on things. And he, yeah. the dude's a, the dude's a scholar when it comes to the scripture. So I'm really excited about tomorrow. We may get into Terrence with him. Um, Ooh, that's a good idea. If he's interested in talking about it, because Terrence. So here's the thing about Terrence Howard. You guys should go watch some of these interviews. Watch the interview with Joe Rogan. It's three hours long. Be humble <laughs> <laughs> when 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 you're watching this thing, because he, there's some statements that he make that he makes literally challenge the foundations of math and science. But and it took me a while to wrap my head around it. But when I started realizing that, oh, my gosh, he might actually be right. Um, he may be onto something. This may be.